from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster. Who's here to keep you company? That's really my job is to keep you company, take your mind off of stuff, to be here. I'm here for you. I'm here when you call via the, but you know, whatever, button. it's not, or a screen. Call me anytime, uh, by, you know, but via podcast app, which actually the podcast app technically does make some sort of call through some sort of codes or something, like to the server. And it says, call, it calls the server. So call me, call my server anytime through your podcast app. Uh, call me on your pod phone. As the Drake once said, and, uh, you know, I'll take your mind off stuff because it's time for sleep with me. The podcast will put you to sleep and sleep with me. He is here out of uh, compassion and empathy and also like saying, Hey, there's a lot of other people out there tossing and turning and stuff too. We're going to keep one another company. You're not alone. Sleep with me is here to keep you company in the deep dark night to fall asleep. But if you need more. There's links to resources you can connect with right now in our show notes. And if you want to be a part of change, internal and external change, say Black Lives Matter with your actions. There's also links to organizations so you can support our community that we all live in. Uh, uh, so those links are in the show notes as well. And these sponsors are why I'm here for you free twice a week and the listeners that support them. Uh, thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, Scoots here, and you've heard me talk about the Patreon a lot. Uh, Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. $5 and up patrons get ad-free, full, brand-new episodes twice a week. They also get two story-only episodes every single week if you just like the stories. There's no commercials. There's no jingles. And $10 and up patrons get all that. They have access all the way back to episode two. They get all intro episodes twice a month. They get a four- to six-hour supersize episode. A compilation episode every single month, and then twenty dollar patrons get a Ray episode every month. But I just wanted to check in if you're a patron and you don't have your patron feed set up, or if you're interested in checking it out. If you're a patron, you could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed, P A T R O N F E E D, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. When you get that patron feed set up in a quality podcast app, you could search the feed. You could say, Oh, I just want to listen to TNG episodes. You just search right in the feed for TNG. Uh, or if you want all intro episodes, or you could set a sleep timer, you could change the speed to ma- listen a little bit faster or a little bit slower. You could make a playlist to all intro episodes. So please, if you're a patron or you're thinking about becoming a patron, you say, wow, that solves a ton of issues for me. I just want to listen to story only episodes. Become a patron and set up that patron feed in your podcast app of choice and then get listening. You'll be sleeping even sounder tomorrow night. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron or to set it up or check it out, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. And if you are a patron and you need any help, it's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron help, P-A-T-R-O-N-H-E-L-P. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I've talked about my own journey with my own mental health, my own use of a licensed professional therapist, because I I guess I want to normalize it for you and say, yeah, it's not easy. 2020 and 2021 have not been easy. But I want to empower you to take steps to take care of yourself, whether you're feeling depressed, you're struggling with your relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, meeting your your goals. Tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp, offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in to your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. In that way, you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 
all 50 states. And people close to me, people in my personal life have utilized the services of BetterHelp and they are really happy with it. And our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. Visit Better help.com slash sleep with me. That's better H E L P.com slash sleep with me and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional. Thanks everybody. Sleep with me is brought to you by progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. And customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you to hear is so I'll pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Let the sponsors know about it. Let me know about it. Right now, I'm looking for people that bought a Helix mattress or got an all-form sofa. If you haven't, check out those sponsors. But if you have, make sure to let the sponsors know about it so they know uh, you purchased the products because you heard about them on Sleep With Me. And uh, then fill out the form at Sleep with me podcast.com shall ask sponsors because it's a big deal uh, right now we're doing this thing if you supported helix or all form where you can get in our dream door society which is really like uh, there's not really many ways to get into it uh, it's a big kind of uh, so check it fill out that form let me know about it and let helix or in all form know about it if you supported them because you heard about them on the show that's the first part of sleepy supporters on the second part is you getting the support you need so if you're in need of extra support right now there's links to it uh, organizations you can connect with internationally right now in our show notes right in your podcast app so please use those links because you're important and if you're if you need extra help right now taking that step is important our community is important too uh, the community around the show the community we all live in and, and the entire community of other human beings so if you want to be a part of positive change and say black lives matter say stop aapi hate there's links to organizations you could connect with to, to learn more and to to take that next right action right in our show notes. And the third part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support. You know, I support other sleep podcasts. I, it's particularly one my friend makes, uh, Craig Harris, over at uh, Sleep Whispers. I don't know if you've listened to Sleep Whispers, but you could find it wherever you listen to your podcast. Sleep Whispers is a podcast of whispered ramblings and readings for relaxation and sleeping. It's made by a wonderful human being. And you get yourself a calming moment, soothing meditations, interesting stories, tranquil poems, education educational Wikipedia articles, listener feedback. And the best part is you could listen to it on your device of choice. You could any podcast app, just type in Sleep Whispers and add it to subscribe or follow it and start listening. Then you got another sleep podcast ready to go for you. Yeah, that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who Chris are they? Posty poster sounds like an earful. Mr. Bard, I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. 
This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, things on your mind that you're thinking about whether you know it could be thoughts from the past or the present or the future so thoughts any feelings coming up emotions bubbling to the surface or left over or you know anticipatory feelings and emotions it could be physical sensations it could be a change in your schedule or your routine. It could be that your schedule is not routine. So many people in different, you know, jobs, especially jobs that are community support, you know, jobs where you're supporting our community in your community. You don't even have regular schedules and we get to be there for you. Because uh, you're there for us. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, it could be something else, you know, seasonal or situational. Whatever it is, I'd like to take your mind off of it. What I propose to do is uh, create a safe place, like I said, where you could set that aside. I'm going to create the safe place by sending my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders. Which means I'll go off topic. Uh, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I'll get mixed up. Filler words. This podcast is so full of filler words, it's overflowing. If I, you know, if I could think of a joke, I would have put it in there. How full is it? It's over. <laughs> See how full is it? It's overflowing. Did I ever tell you all, my my dear listeners, the great uh, tub overflow story? I think it. I know there is a something called tub overflow. I'll tell. I'll try to remember to tell it to you because uh, it's just an example of how human we all can be. And I think that was when I made the pod. I think the podcast existed then. Maybe not though. Maybe it didn't exist then. I, I'm not sure. But whatever. Uh, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna. Um, oh, send my voice. Oh, so if you're new few things you might want to know because uh, the, this podcast is very different. So if you're having a reaction or you get here, you say, what is this? Is it, what's this, uh, when's the, the story going to start? I'd say about 15 minutes from now. So the reason this podcast is different is it's really here to, uh, it's a, a sleep podcast, but I'm also very different. Maybe you're very different. So we could, we have that and, you know, we share that. It's one of the things that can keep us awake at night. It's just fe- those you could, that could be a feeling and a thought uh, and a phys- it could it could, be, it could be a triple decker. Oh boy! So what was my point? And w- when I tell you this tub story, you'll say, "Okay, makes sense." Uh, so, oh, so the spy kiss is different. That's one thing. But of course, if you're if you're skeptical or doubtful, if you're new, that would make total sense as well. Because I'm sure you've been promised things to put you to sleep in the past. Maybe you're like a lot of the other listeners, the regular listeners listening now, or the new listeners that say, yeah, I've tried all this different stuff and none of it works, or it works for me like for a day or a week. And I say, yeah, I've been there. That's why I started making this show, as a matter of fact. So that's one thing. The podcast is different. It's also not a podcast you really listen to. My job is I'm here to keep you company and to take your mind off of stuff in a way that just barely engages you. So you say, okay, I'm aware someone is talking and they may tell a story about a bed, like a tub in the intro, (laughs) the old bed tub. It ain't no hole in the bed tub. Emmett Otter never sang that one. But if there was a bed tub, you'd probably want multiple holes in it. Putting a bed in a tub probably would put a crick in your neck, so don't do it. Uh, 
it, it, yeah, I was just thinking of the term crick in the neck. Uh, it's spelled differently than creek, right? But, but, okay, so, oh, so, yeah, you don't really listen to me. You just kind of look at me like you would observe water passing by in a stream. You say, okay, there's some water going there. But you're not really paying too much attention. So loosely listen or listen in an out-of-focus way, you're like you're looking at water clouds. I don't really actually put you to sleep either, even though this is a sleep podcast. And I kind of started that whole, like the sleep audio kind of thing back in 2013. This podcast doesn't put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep. So I'm here to take your mind off of stuff while you drift off. That's why the shows are over, over an hour. So you say, oh, I got plenty of time to fall asleep. And the, like, here's the other thing. You don't even have to fall asleep. If you can't sleep, I'm going to be here. So listening to me is optional, but there's no pressure to fall asleep. Uh, my job is to keep you barely engaged and to keep you company whether you need it or not. And if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to the very end because there's a tiny percentage of listeners on a regular basis uh, that can't sleep. And then there's people that, yes, yeah, situationally, I'm here to keep you company. I'm really here to apply for the role of boar friend, boar bud, boar, boar sib, boar bestie, boar cuz. And yeah, I guess I have an admission to make about not being perfect. I mean, definitely on multiple levels, but this tub story will show you. So... Uh, a couple other things that if you're new, they can throw new listeners off. One is the structure of the show, other than all the other stuff I said, and that I'm an acquired taste, and that it takes two or three times to get used to the show. The structure show is very different, but it's intentionally different. Uh, show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, so you feel welcome. Then there's business uh, and listener support and that kind of stuff. That's how we're able to be here free twice a week is the business at the top of the show and the business after the intro before the episode. Then there's an intro. The intro goes from like minute four or minute six to minute 20 or so. And for new listeners, at first it can feel a little bit jarring but for regular listeners, it kind of serves a purpose. And then for some new listeners, they get it right away and they like start falling asleep or getting comfortable. And then a few people skip the intro. 3% of listeners skip the intro. But for most people, the intro introduces a new person to the show. You get to know me, particularly tonight. I'm going to tell you a personal story. But it also gives you some space between your daytime and your falling asleep time, whether you listen to the podcast while you're getting ready for bed or as part of your wind down routine or you're in bed already cozy and comfy. Uh, regular listeners, it, it kind of helps you ease you into bedtime. So that's the goal of the intro. And because it goes uh, for like 15 or 20 minutes, some people say, why? And I say, well, to give you some space uh, to set the sun, uh, as we say, or as I just said just now. So that's the intro. Then there's business, and then it'll be a bedtime story. Tonight will be a story of two siblings uh, going on a small adventure on a long and winding road. And I forgot their names, uh, but... Uh, uh, Isocles and uh, Listocles. So that'll be interesting. And then there's some thank yous at the end. So that's the structure show. Like a lot of listeners said, and I said earlier, this uh, podcast is an acquired taste. Uh, so give it two or three tries before you give up on it. Unless you d really don't like it already and you say, this is not for me, so, sir. I just don't appreciate you. And that's fine. Not everybody likes me or the podcast. I told, like, I'm not even being, like, I'm not being snarky. I totally get it. Like, and that's, I have a website, sleepinmepodcast.com slash no thank you. You could go there. There's other sleep podcasts and sleep audio stuff. Because, yeah, this is just podcast just isn't for everyone. So that, and the, so I don't think I've ever told this story or maybe I have. So let's see. The 2021 when I'm recording this, this must have been... Somewhere between 20, 
2010 and 2014. It could have been any year, any of those years, maybe even 2015. Uh, though probably not. I'm trying to think. Uh, my daughter was born in 22. Well, I don't want to say her exactly, but so I, we were visiting. It was a summertime, and we were visiting. We were having like a small family get gathering. We, you know, me and my family try to get together in the summer, and we have like, go to a cabin on Lake Ontario. Uh, but we were. Uh, and this have is this has never it hasn't successfully happened. But this whatever the, whatever it was, it had, maybe I I think I did make the podcast at this time. I'm not positive though. But let's say it was 2014, just or 2015, just for uh, I think because yeah, I think it was after 20 whatever. So it, whatever it was, one of those years. It was it was in the it was in the history of the, the, the humanity. But so I grew up in Syracuse, New York, and we have our childhood home. And my parents were, were, were kind of living there, but mostly they had relocated to Florida. And there's, I'm the oldest of six kids. So in, in our, our, our childhood home in Syracuse is, is a, like a, it, it was there and different people were living there at different times. And... But my mom had said, okay, this is whatever this summer was. She said, I want you to come. We got some work to do around the house. And, uh, you know, if you have anything at the house, I want you to take it and get rid of it. This isn't the important part of the story. This is just a setup of just like a sleep podcast. Uh, but so we were there. And then we also had to do a bunch of yard work, uh, like not landscaping, but like weeding and that kind of stuff really stuff i was not i was like i think this is part of my vacation and meanwhile my my brother-in-law was working so he was not on vacation and he was working remotely and he's working remotely from my parents basement downstairs um on a computer and then I like, so I was like going indoors and inside and outside, like working on the lawn and, and the whatever weeding and stuff and cutting bushes and going inside because my daughter was with me and she was whatever. She was like around six, seven years old or something. And we, so we hadn't been staying at this house. We'd been staying at a cabin on Lake Ontario that doesn't really have a bath or anything. And it's like a got a septic tank, so you don't really take you kind of bathe in the lake because you there's not a lot of it's not you know it's like a outdoor living style. And so we I said why don't you take a bath because this is a great opportunity you know with uh, the, the like at this house you could take a bath. She says okay why don't you start my bath for me I'm doing something. So I start running the bathtub. And the bathroom is like right next to the room where my brother-in-law is working. And I guess apparently this bathtub doesn't have any sort of overflow thing or anything. So I start running the bathtub and I said, hey, brother, nameless brother-in-law, like uh, I'm running the bathtub uh, for for my daughter. So I'm going to go back outside and work on the stuff, uh, work on the lawn. Now, this wasn't really, I did not ask his permission because he was working. So I made a big old ASSUME, mostly out of me, but it also was my fault, even though in the story and even in my own feelings sometimes, I would say, well, but really I'm the one to blame. I made an ASSUME. So I said, hey, just keep an eye on that tub or something. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, but he was working, like doing tech support. So he, he was focused. Then I went outside and started, you know, doing more weeding. And probably mostly, I'll be honest with you, I was—I don't know how much weeding or cleaning I was doing, and more. I was probably doing more gripeing. I mean, it was in the summer in Syracuse, New York, with like 80, 90 percent humidity. But so whatever, I did lose track of time because we were doing stuff, and then I totally forgot about it. And they heard all this yelling, and. Ended up, the tub just kept on going, and uh, it filled up, it overflowed, f filled the bathroom, then f flowed out of the bathroom 
and surrounded my brother-in-law. He was actually unaware of it because he was, I think he had headphones on and filled the room he was in, which had like old carpet. So it even made the situation a little bit less, not great. Uh, and then someone else came in and they said, what in the hay? So, and then, yeah, for me, I probably tried to like, be like, well, why weren't you paying more attention? But really it was my fault. Uh, and that tub overflowed. I have no idea what point that made. But just to share, if any of you out there feel like you're a, a person, I'm a person too. I'm, that's the kind of thing. Think about all the, like, uh, water was wasted. Ended up that the carpet, even it was old anyway, so we had to tear that out. Uh, I don't think my daughter took a bath because uh, there's so much uh, hullabaloo. But yeah, it uh, now it's all okay. You know, these these things happen. Uh, but I would never would have thought. I guess uh, if I think of my whole life, that's the only time I remember that happening to me, like where it was definitely. Where I say, wait a second. Uh, how come I don't lose track of filling up tubs all the time? I'm sure it happened before. Maybe not though. Because usually, I mean, I think the water, would, I think the tub has some sort of mechanism for that. But you, the, if the water's like on, like you're filling it up, it, uh, you know what I'm saying. So d here's my policy that I have is like uh, only fill up the tub if you're in the room. It, I mean, that's probably what I should have stuck with or set a timer on your phone. I don't know. I actually wouldn't know what I was thinking. Maybe it was like in the middle of a conversation where I couldn't just sit there with the, and let the tub fill. I think I was, d d don't multitask. Hey, Scoot, that's more for me, not for you. Scoots, don't multitask. Uh, so I won't tonight. I mean, I, my mind will, you know, put multiple things in the path of my task. But tonight I'm here for one thing and one thing only, for you, because you deserve a good night's sleep, uh, you deserve a place you could rest, and I want to help. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you coming by. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. I really want to help you fall asleep, and here's a couple of ways I'm able to be here for you twice a week. Thanks. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here, and it's time to talk about Feather. Feather is changing the furniture industry, and I'm getting ready to move, and I've been looking at furniture. And I don't know if you've looked at furniture lately, but you're talking about wait times to get stuff delivered four months, six months. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Now, with Feather, the furniture comes in as little as seven days. You know, moving and buying furniture, getting it delivered, setting it up, it's a huge pain. It's expensive. These are all all the reasons I love Feather. And this is why you have to check out Feather too. People who live in cities move six to eight times before they hit their early 30s. And Feather has it all figured out. They're a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. Furnishing a one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000. With Feather, you can furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. Their delivery team brings the furniture directly to your home in as little as seven Seven days. They handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. And you got to check out their website. They don't just have furniture. They have these amazing rugs, lamps, wall arts. Now they even have outdoor furniture. And they might say, yeah, well, but what if I move to a place with a different layout? That's no problem with Feather. You can easily swap out furniture that works with any space. And it's more sustainable by renting with Feather. You're not buying fast. It's cheap furniture that's going to end up in a landfill. So you've heard me talking about it. Feather is going to be a part of my next move because they make it so easy. It makes so much sense. So try a new way to furnish your home. Right now, Feather has an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. If you go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP300, you'll receive $300 off your first month of their annual plan. That's livefeather.com and use our promo code SLEEP300 
for $300 off. That's livefeather.com and use that promo code SLEEP300. Thanks, everybody. All right, buddy. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Air Doctor. And I live in California, so I am so glad I have an Air Doctor. I have an Air Doctor in my daughter's room. I have an Air Doctor wherever I'm working during the day and then wherever I'm sleeping at night. Air Doctor keeps that air I breathe clean, keeps the air my daughter breathes clean. That way I don't have to worry about allergies or wildfires and smoke pollution germs coming in when stuff gets to delivered or bringing them in from the outside. And even when I'm cooking or cleaning, the Air Doctor takes care of those fumes as well. That's why you got to check out Air Doctor. Air Doctor makes professional quality air purifiers that remove both particles and toxic gases. Air Doctor uses medical grade ultra HEPA filters that have been independently tested to remove 99.99% of tested bacteria and virus, plus virtually everything else, including pollen, dust, and smoke. The Air Doctor Doctor captures 100% of particles at 0.003 microns in size. That's 100 times more effective than ordinary HEPA purifiers. Air Doctor makes purifiers to fit every room in your home, from bedrooms and home offices to open concepts and great rooms. You know, Americans spend 90% of our time indoors, and that indoor air, according to the EPA, can be two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. It's 30% quieter than fans found in ordinary air purifiers. It takes the guesswork out of clean air with its auto mode, it uses a laser sensor to detect air quality and automatically adjust to the correct filtration level. And it works. Like I said, it provides peace of mind, keeps my sinuses clear, but more importantly, during the smoke season, I don't, I rest easy. I don't have to worry about it. Air Doctor comes with a no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund. Just go to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code sleep and you'll receive up to $300 off. You have have to use that link and our code that's airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code sleep and that's right you could get up to three hundred dollars off at a-i-r-d-o-c-t-o-r-p-r-o.com and use that promo code sleep thanks everybody all right everybody it says scoots here and this is a, a one of these famous myths uh, th- that was th- one of these myths that was never famous uh, that I, I know about and i heard about and for some reason, they just never kept, you see, well, what never quite caught on as a tall tale, never caught on as a part of folklore, never was exchanged by word of mouth through generation to generation, uh, wasn't used as a teaching tool or, or you know, to, to reinforce some belief system. This was one of these stories that might have only been told a few times, but I happen to be lucky enough to hear it and uh, kind of remember it. So I thought I'd tell it to you tonight. It, oh, is it exciting. It's a tale of Listocles and Isocles. And this was a long ago, back when people had names like that. I don't know if, like, uh, somewhere... Long, long ago, I think like in, I don't know if the year was 1910, but I'm pretty sure that they were named, oh, good question. Are they twins? I don't know. Let's see. I think they're siblings and not twins, Isocles and Listocles. Oh, and like, I think their parents were fans of that style, though it could be the Roman times. Is that when people got called that? Isosceles. Wasn't that a character in a Sleep With Me episode? Oh, no. It was Isosceles. Uh, but this was like a, quite, quite a tale, as, as so many of these tales are. And when Isocles and Listocles reached a certain age, they, they were told, okay, what it, it, with, in our family... In our like a great, greater uh, community, when you reach a certain age... We send you out for what we call the long walk. And they said, oh, like the long walk, like to the store. To, and they said, the store? What kind of science fiction? What's a store? And then the kid said, I was speaking, actually. Uh, I think that was Listicles. W- long walk to go to the store and pick up some uh, butts or some uh, cigarettes or some some treats. 
And again, the parental figure said, "What? Did, where, where'd you read about that?" And and then I basically said, "Yeah, fiction. We've been reading books uh, called science fiction." And the parents said, "Well, you've reached that age of uh, near maturity, where you're ready to, you know, start to make your way in the world. Though you'll still live with us, and you know, we'll still be responsible for you." This is not just a symbolic ceremony. You go out on a long walk, uh, not as long as a walk like Craig Mod goes on, and you won't have, uh, you know, you won't have uh, the cam. The, the parents said, "I don't even know what a camera is." I know you were gonna, I know you're reading about that though. But they said we're gonna send you out there, and uh, basically said, "Mama, Papa." Where where do we walk to, and why? How long is the walk? And they said it's a long walk. Uh, and you'll head out tonight. You'll have everything you need. Where will we go? Listically, she said, uh, "Mama, Papa." And the mama and the papa said, "Look at the whole community here." And they said, oh, "And the rest of the members of the community." And the, then the, everybody looked because they don't remember what uh, Listicles was asking because that small tangent got everybody mixed up. Uh, and they said, you'll head out and you'll be okay. At times you may feel like you're not going to be okay. But as Emma Otter once said, all will be well. All will be as, it is, as it's been. As it bees, all will be. As it is, uh, 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 you know, as Barbara Budd once said, as it happens, as she was introducing the show. And at that point, Listicles and uh, Icicles were just staring. And then, uh, and then Icicles said, must we go? And they said, you must. Uh, so head off uh, on the long, long and winding road. And they said, that's the road we've never, we've, they said, no children can go on the long and winding road. And at that, a guffaw echoed out across the adults of the community. And then a knowing look, and they said, that's what every, every child says uh, before they're allowed to go out on the long and winding road. And Listicles and Icicles didn't get it immediately. They said, uh, it's because you, like, you're no longer children. And uh, so you're no longer banned. And then uh, I, uh, Listicles, I think, said, can I make an admission? We have snuck out there. It's just on the edge of town. You know, there's nothing blocking that road, but... Uh, like uh, two posts and a rope or something, a hempen or something. So we go out and, they, and they, like uh, there's nothing out there. It goes over some. We, we went out there because we said, "Look at me! I'm standing on the long and winding road." And then we went out on it for a while, and it just wound over a few hilltops, uh, back and forth, and just boring. But we did go, we have been on the road, so do we really need to go? And then they laughed, and they said, every child tries to set a foot on the long and winding road, and even takes a few steps, some more than a few steps out on that road. Uh, but now is your time to journey on that road. So head out, uh, the two of you, and uh, start walking. And yeah, I guess the first part will be familiar to the two of you. So they headed out. Uh, it was, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. or something by, by, by my watch. Uh, it was warm, late spring. There was a buzz in the air. There was a, a fluff in the air for the, uh, as uh, Listicles had said, this was a kind of like a meadow-type uh, rolling hills situation. But it was a rutted path, like uh, wagons had crossed there thousands of years ago for thousands of times or something, because they had never seen a wagon on the road. But there was wagon ruts, uh, 
or, or so they thought. I don't, they didn't know for sure. And they headed out, and they saw a different, you know, floating thing, you know, you know, you know, things living in the meadows, kind things or neutral things, just buzzing around, or floating on butterfly wings. There was thistles and grasses. There was wild flowers. Listicles like to make lists, so uh, listicles was there was you know leaves and mo- there wasn't any moss listicles noted and uh, actually icicles said can you can you be quiet for a little while i just want to listen to uh, to the sounds of the, 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 the what's around us instead of having and then listicles said shall i make a list of sounds i hear a buzzing i hear a groan like like almost it's not a groan a human groan but it's the sound of a, a forest friend, not, you know, grow, oh, I hear some wind. I hear, uh, I hear nothing beneath everything, but that is something too. And basically said, and all I hear is you. And they laughed because they, you know, they, they did like one another. Though at times, you know, they did not. It was not an all or nothing situation for Listicles and Icicles. And uh, Icicles said, I forgot to ask, uh, like, is this, a, this is going to, we just said it's a long and winding road. They never told us how long we're supposed to go out for or whether we're uh, supposed to turn around and come back. We don't even have a destination. They just said it head out on the long and winding road. And Listicles was uh, said, well, I'd already thought, I thought about that while we were walking to the long and winding road. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up, Icicles, so we could talk about it right now. And Icicles said, okay, well, and they, you know, they were stepping, each one with their own motion, but they were traveling at the same pace. Though from time to time, Listicles would go a little faster or, or, you know, meandered within a while Listicles is stuck to one of the ruts. Except if there was like a puddle or something and then Listicles would go, or yeah, Listicles would go around that. And so uh, uh, Listicles waited for Listicles to to say like uh, the, the theory and then Listicles said, sorry, sorry, I was li- li- thinking of other things I was hearing that I was going to list uh, for my listing. And Listicles said, Listicles, I wonder if you loved lists in, like before, if you were not named Listicles. Uh, and it's Listicles said, Listicles, not Listicles. Uh, and then Icicles said, well, if you were named Listicles, would you think you would like lists? And uh, Listicles said, I actually don't like lists. I mean, I know we're close and we know a lot about one another, but uh, I guess we don't know everything. So this is yet another opportunity. I don't love lists. Uh, I don't dislike lists either. Lists are merely a tool for me to organize things in a, like in a way that I could look at and study and can't maybe move uh, to another list or a collection. A list doesn't even necessarily, you could be, it could be a pre-list. You could just make a bunch of words somewhere. But eventually you might say, well, let me look at them in list form. And then you could say, let me not look at them in list form. But I found that... Uh, you know, there's written lists, and then there's a listing off. Old listicles, they say. And I know they say it, uh, listicles, uh, just listing off stuff. But how else would you You only say stuff? You, you, it's uh, When we speak, it's mostly linear, except if there's long pauses between what we say. It's all going... In a list-like manner, I would say list-like, not like a like a list. I mean, yes, like a list, and not. You know what I mean, Isocles? You're right. I did not know that about you. 
I thought you loved lists, and uh, would you say you're over relying on lists? I'm not. Again, I'm not trying to. I'm just uh, like this is news to me. So I'd, I'd say, well, my dear brother, listicles does not love lists, but use do do you use lists for your loves? How else would I count the ways, uh, dear sibling? Of, of course I would. Uh, but yeah, no, I do. I find you, the lists have a great utility. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm over relying on lists. I would say that it has a well worn, like these well worn. Well, for example, as I already started to make the example, but then I said I thought I would say it. For example, for clarity, we're walking on what seems to be wheel ruts. Uh, you know, though the wheel was banned in our community long, long ago, we have no wheels. Uh, you know, once Baron von Square, 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 Square uh, took over uh, and, and, and you expressed, the, the, and that's just what uh, our, we call Baron von Square, Square, that, uh, you know, all things uh, circles, uh, well, it didn't work out, but wheels were the one thing that they said, well, we could get rid of wheels. We might not be able to get rid of all circles. We realize they have a utility. And I think, you know, I know that sometimes the people talk about, well, maybe it reduced our mobility because, uh, we, you know, there's also then it changed our relationships with horses because they said, no, no, no horses either. Uh for riding, you know, and we don't live in an agrarian community, so we don't know. But I know we in school we learn about how they use those uh, for uh, moving around stuff. And, and But, oh, my point was, so there hasn't been a wagon or a wheeled vehicle traveling this road for as long as we know. As long as we've been alive, but even Mom and Papa, as long as they they've never they they've never ridden the Great Wheel Band was before them. And Mom and Papa have to be hundreds of years old. Uh, well, they're not actually. They, they you just feel like they're hundreds. Of, I know, I know they're not hundreds of years old. But if I could, I, 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 okay, so. Uh, what was my point? I forget. I already forgot what my point was. That, that these ruts in the road uh, are, are they assign assign this path has been overused, or was it a utility that's left its mark? Uh, why? So why would they have the long and winding road? Well, hmm, this is very confusing. Like, so this is a long and winding road, but so vehicles or wheeled wagons used to travel on the long and winding road? Yes, realistically, so you were uh, going to tell me what your theory was about why we didn't have a destination, and they just said set out on the long and winding road. Okay, dear sibling. Basically, so I will need your help on this because while I have a theory, and I think my theory has is it has some validity to it. I also know that I get I can run away with my expectations. You know, when I'm making lists of things that are great or things that are not so great, uh, like my all or nothing lists. Uh, even though it's a list of all, like it might be an all list, all the dreams that are going to come true for me. Then when you put it in list form, I guess this maybe is answering your previous question, though. It can become a tool that is of not of use to me, though now maybe this is part of the maturing process that we're out on this road walking and talking. Holy cow, this long and winding road really works. What do you mean, dear sibling? Well, basically, so I do. I do have a habit of making those lists. Uh, lists of uh, who might be my first kiss. Uh, that's still a list that's left unchecked. But uh, 
or, you know, lists of, do uh, you know what I mean? All good lists or all not good lists. Well, they'll tell me more of list, uh, list please. So what if I made a list of, uh, uh, okay, here's, here's a couple of examples. If I would have thought today, I know they said, we got to go to the town square. We have to talk to you about something. And, uh, you know, all, this is the one thing no one ever tells you about that you're going to have to go out on a long and winding road. So there must be some point where we're sworn to secrecy, which I don't know how that is manifested in an effective way. But anyway, I would if I would have made a list of what was going to happen today, whether it was good or, or even if it was a list of likely things that actually had a likelihood, it, this would not have been on my list. I see that, uh, my, my dear sibling. Okay, so the other thing is that, yeah, sometimes I make these lists that are all positive things, and then the list it doesn't lose all meaning, but it... Uh, loses some relevance because it, it creates an unreality. And then I base my expectations on that unreality because they say, oh, well, if, uh, you, you know, like those rocket, the people, those rocket people, right, they could change into a rocket or the drill people that could change into a drill and go into the earth uh, in our science fiction books, uh, or even the people that said, well, I'm going to become a scientist and people the, 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 like, uh, so what if I like, so if I came up with a list of like that one day, I'm going to be a rocket person, or I might be a drill person that could drill into the earth, uh, or I might be a, a swimmer breather under the water person, or I might be a scientist, or I might become a bird or you know, you know what I mean? There's nothing on that list, uh, even as we descend down. You say, well, I guess they could become a scientist. doesn't exist, but uh, it could still become it. Uh, it could become a wheel maker. I don't know. I guess what I said is most of my lists, uh, they tend to be on the extremes. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. So I think for this journey... Even though I have a general idea of uh, I'm guessing what's going to happen, maybe I could be wrong. Even though when I started talking about it, I had full confidence I was right. Okay, dear sibling, tell me more. Okay, so here's what I think is going to happen. that At some point on our journey, either I don't think we'll, well, I guess we might reach an obvious destination. Uh, in that the adults or our entire community will be waiting for us. So, the, so that might be a too optimistic, ex, 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 like, and that'll be soon. And that in the ceremony will be completed. But I, I got a feeling, because I could sense the room, you know, even though we're outdoors, that uh, it's not going to be all like that. Uh, so there will probably be some parts of this. Like, I'm just warning you, and I know you're a bit more grounded than me, that this is probably going to be a more than one day thing because of the packs we have. We haven't looked in our packs, but that we're probably going to be sleeping somewhere and eating lunch, uh, dinner, breakfast, maybe other meals. Holistically, that's uh, brilliant. We could figure out how long they expect us to be out here by looking through our packs. Uh, wow. Yeah. So let's keep walking though. Let's, 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 uh, keep that as an open area of inquiry and not stop until we think we're going to have lunch. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I li so keep going. So, well, I guess that was it. So I think that at some point we're going to reach a destination and then we'll know it's a destination. There is a lower possibility that we are on a loop. Um, okay, well, while you're listing possibilities, any more possibilities? So the, it could be a loop uh, that loops back. Uh, the other possibility is it's, not, it's some kind of test and that there's not a destination. Oh, boy, I didn't even think about this, Isocles. 
Okay, go ahead. Well, okay, so let me say what I was going to say first, and then I'll see if I can remember what I just thought of. So I was thinking it could be a test to see how how long it takes us to turn around and come back home, right? Uh, like, oh, when are we going to do we give up? But what if it's also a test like that, like uh, to see how far we keep going, like to see if we... You know what I mean? To see, okay, good, okay, holistically, uh, uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm hearing what you're saying. So a couple of possibilities, like you're saying, this could be a simple combination of uh, uh, a safe, somewhat jur- but somewhat open-ended journey, even though we're on a rutted path that we're supposed to follow, uh, that uh, we're supposed to go out somewhere in the next 36 hours or hopefully just 24 hours is a destination and we'll be, you know, it'll be our passage into adulthood. The other possibility is that this is a loop probably about the same time, but just guessing by the weight of my pack, but that's no, 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 no definitive thing. And that we make it back, uh, uh, like, like on the loop in about a day or two. It could be even simpler than that, and then in the next few hours, there's a destination. So, and those would be nice ways to think about it, right? Or maybe we're already using some tool. Uh, and why did we? Why do we go out together? In as opposed to, I guess we don't have to answer that, but I do wonder, okay, we're going out together. Do, do other people go out together or do they go out alone? Here's an idea. What if a mom and dad just came up with this uh, for us? It's not a, like that's why we never heard about it. Huh, that's an interesting theory. <laughs> You're right. Uh, that would answer why no other kid has ever said anything, even though we're all banned from going on the long and winding road. Okay, but you seem to have other theories, Isocles, uh, so tell me your other theories. Okay, well, some of these theories might go on your list uh, on the extreme of the non-positive extreme, but not totally all the way to the other side, though that probably is farthest to, to, to the... If mom and dad just came up with this to send us out, I don't, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Well, we do have the packs, uh, so that's something, right? Uh, well, what if we opened up the packs and there was just heavy books in there? Well, then it would be like we were in some sort of fictional. Like I think that's just, that's something from reading our fictional. Let's go with that though, Isaacules. Uh, since we're not going to open our packs for a little while. Then it is like a science fiction book we read. Wow, you're right. So what if we, yeah, so we were sitting out on the journey. And it, it seemed like a community. So what if we say yes to more than one of these? So we we thought we were getting, sending out on the long and winding road as a part of a community ceremony to, to embrace our adulthood, but it was really just a, something our parents had arranged for some reason. Uh, then we set out, then, we, then as we kind of discussed and we tried to come up with uh, things, though I guess this idea wouldn't hold too much weight because they didn't tell us not to open our packs, did they? No, but they did put them on our backs and then set us forth and clip the things, which would have dissuaded us. They didn't put them on our backs till we were already at the edge of the long and winding road. Okay, but let's just imagine that uh, we open the packs and they're empty. They're just full of uh, whatever, like a rock. It doesn't feel like rocks, but books and rocks or stuff of no value to us out here. So then we would probably, most people would just to, to maybe, I don't know what we would, what do you think we would do? Well, there's a forest ahead. It doesn't look like an ominous forest uh, uh, coming down this uh, last large hill we've gone up. Um, looks like it's a small, what do you call it, a canyon. And then there's some hills and uh, 
Yeah, it's a stream or river that runs through it. And the path clearly goes into the forest or woods up there. Okay, so this would be the part of the thing where, and it's almost getting towards lunch. We, we will have lunch before we get to those woods. So anyone else would be looking in their pack by then, more than likely. And then you discover your pack's empty. You could easily get back. Um, I mean, the more, most likely outcomes would be go back home immediately. Uh, continue on into the woods for, I don't know, two or three more hours and then head back. Uh, because at least you would be out. Of, like, And you could even go further. I'm just saying because, uh, like, you could eventually... As long as you're following the long and winding road out of the woods, it's pretty easy to follow. And then you would get back at night. Uh, and then maybe they have a celebration for you then. Or maybe they're on long watch. They could e e also easily send out some of the people that are better at uh, walking fast or running to come out and get us. Yeah, I'm not saying I feel really, even with this theory, I don't really feel uncomfortable. Well, I mean, there's certain things I feel uncomfortable about, Icicles, but I don't feel, I feel like Emma Otter said, all will, will, will be, all will be what it be, 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 but all will be well, kind of too, because it will be as it is. Uh, right, and that is something we've been taught. I mean, here's the thing. If that's the truth uh, and we open up the packs and there's nothing in them, part of me would want to go back. Maybe it's a way of, uh, uh, like, part of me would be really, uh, I don't know if I'd want to, uh, like, long-term, I would question, like, whether I'd want to make long-term residents in our community. And I don't think I would, like, uh, you know, say, well, like, like, let's say I moved to, to another town or city or whatever. Uh, I'd say, well, you could come visit, but but you, you're gonna have to stay somewhere else to mom and dad. I said, well, why? Well, because of the long and winding road. Uh, yeah, you could you could visit me and my new family, and uh, you know I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, you you're gonna have to go home after dinner, or go to a, you know stay at an inn. Oh, Icicles, you're so much better at those kind of boundaries than me. I would have just kept it. I would have been keeping a list uh, and checking it twice, but I don't know what I would have said. Oh, so so what do you think we would do, though? It, what, what do you think if the packs are empty? What do you think our move is? Well, I wouldn't want. I would want to do something that they wouldn't expect, just to um, trying to find a way to teach them a lesson. I guess. Yeah, same here. Uh, which would just be keeping going, but I don't know if we could responsibly keep going. I mean, well, I guess there's the river, so we could, like, drink out of the river, and then we could keep going. I mean, along the river, I did not see any signs of, like, anything, and I know that, you know, once... Uh, Lord Square, Baron von Square Square came and, you know, they, they tried to separate all our communities out. So it's like, you know, I mean, oh, yeah, because so it's longer than a, a two day d distance between every community. Yeah, I think it's like a, for for below average, for above average walker, it should take two and a half days. Uh, and I don't know if that's constant walking. So we won't encounter any official communities, uh, but it would make sense that a community would be along the lines of the river, right? And if we stayed by the river, we'd have, we'd have water. We'd probably get, we'd have to make sure the water's good to, good to drink, uh, or just give it a shot. But like then we wouldn't have anything to eat and we we probably I mean that probably is fine from my understanding of that for a couple of days uh so i would say we would try to go follow the river up through the canyon through the woods and then see like keep following the long and winding road i guess if that did not work and there isn't a branch 
like uh, we could head up. I think it looks like we're going to be heading. Oh, no, we're going to be heading upstream. So then we could head downstream, which makes me think that this river stream probably goes below ground at some point and feeds the, the aquifer, or aquifer in our community. So then we would make it back, but then why wouldn't we just take the ba the road back, the long and winding road? So if our packs are empty, that would be my vote in this moment. Though I'm sure my tune will change as the hours go on, or if we test out the water. What we th I think we should just take some sips of the water when we get there, and then give it a couple hours to see how we feel, and then drink, stay, maybe even take a break by the stream or river or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's why I trust you, dear sibling. Okay, so that's interesting. Here's an idea. Like, I was just making, not lists in my head, but as you're talking, I was categorizing and, you know, thinking, I was trying to listen to everything you were saying intently. I, I don't know if you could tell. I even tripped a couple times because I was you know, looking at you. Uh, but so here's what I'm thinking. What if we just keep going? We don't, because we're ne now we're almost at the lunch, where we would eat lunch. We don't open the packs. Uh, what if we don't open the packs till tonight? And we we try out your water thing anyway. Is there, is there a downside? As long as we're staying on the long and winding road. I mean, maybe we have to go off the long and winding road to get to the river. I don't know. It's tough to tell with those trees that are coming up. But this, this looks like a pleasant enough, everything's kind of spread out. Yeah, I think as long as we, I think that's a good theory. I mean, I was also thinking why, like, I, I don't sense that anybody's keeping an eye on us, uh, which would be kind of, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that too, like some adult observers. So that's like, what if, what if there was kids that just didn't want to stay on the road? Um. Like, uh, uh, that's when, like my question is, do they just expect us to stay on the long and winding road? I, I don't know. I mean, I, my, my, my theory with that would be no. I mean, there might be kids that, uh, or, well, one, that kind of makes another thing. You're right. Maybe mom and dad uh, just set this up for their own w w life lesson. But, uh. It does also make me think that um, th there would be some kids, I mean, depending on how long they've been doing this ceremony, that uh, that would uh, go off the road or something. Okay, here's, a, here's another idea that just popped in my head, Listicles. Uh, now that we're in this forest, it's a bit cooler. Good thing we have our cloaks wrapped around our waists. Uh, also, that gave me confidence that if we had to sleep, uh, it shouldn't be too cold tonight, but we should be fine because we have these cloaks we can wrap ourselves in or lie on them or a combination of both because they're so, you know, they're like those slokes that person invented. Yeah, I love my cloak too. Um, what were you saying though? So I was thinking about uh, Baron von Square Square, right? One, easy person to blame for this. I mean, I guess it was a natural progression to blame our parents. Maybe we should have blamed Baron, Baron von Square Square first. Uh, I don't understand, uh, dear sibling. Okay, well, here's the thing. So two possibilities uh, within a range of possibilities. What if one, this is some sort of uh, edict of Varenbond Square Square makes every community follow for whatever reason, because Varenbond Square Square is just, uh, you know, from a generation of uh, circle disliking, controlling rulers. And this serves some sort of other purpose or is just a way, whatever. Maybe they're like, uh, I don't know. That's one thing. Or, well, I guess then there's three possibilities or more. 
or uh, our community came up with this ceremony to blame. And then when we get back, they'll blame Baron von, Baron von Square Square. And then we'll live our lives loathing Baron von Square Square even more. And at one day that may serve some purpose or it just serves a purpose that we believe in our community leaders more than Baron von Square Square. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see that as a possibility. I mean, Baron von Square Square could be great. Uh, and just says, well, sir, here's a list of reasons why circles and wheels aren't great. Uh, why, you know, there's plenty of reasons you could come up with. Yeah, another thing could be either Baron von Square Square or our community. This is some sort of preparation. They say, okay, well, this was this is to prepare you for dealing with Baron von Square Square or the Baron von Square Squares of the world. Okay, there's a river. It is a stream or a creek. Uh, should we go off the path? I mean, we'll be able to see the path and the creek from this part right here. Should we go to the creek and drink a small drink? I think only one of us sh should drink a small amount. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Uh, because then I can make a list of anything, you know, I'm thinking of or whatever. Okay, go ahead. Let's walk. Oh, wow. It's very clear. I don't see anything floating in it. It's coming from that hill. Uh, and uh, I know that there's... Uh, I think you, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's 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 cool and refreshing. Not too refreshing. I don't want to make you jealous, uh, Icicles. But I imagine it came from melted ice. Ice. Uh, so uh, yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. And we. Uh, I don't know if we do. We need to rest now. Let's keep going and and figuring. So, did you have any other theories, Icicles, or were you? Well, I was just thinking this could be a preparatory thing, or something like that. Yeah, I guess it could be. Well, here's the other thing I was thinking, Icicles. So it's apparent to me that we're heading in. We're, we're I mean, we've been long and wi we've been winding, right? Uh, but then I think about this. So the road is definitely winding. We've been winding. We're winding through this forest. And eventually we'll wind our way up uh, through that pass uh, uh, up there that we can see above. And it seems like a fairly low altitude pass. So it shouldn't be a problem. We should probably uh, bed down or something. Or maybe go up and then come back down, depending on what time we get to the elevation gain. But that'll be a long and that'll be a winding road. How do you define long? If it's winding, then it's automatically going to be long, even if it covers a short distance. Wow, that's something only a list lover could come up with. That's a brilliant point. But then they put long first, long and winding, not the long wind, the winding long road or the long winding road. The long and winding road, is that what they called it? I think that's what they called it. I don't know anymore. You're right. So that tells me it's pretty long. And I don't know, I get the sense that maybe we're out here and it is open-ended and if it isn't, if it is open ended, now I'm glad we're together and I think we can support one another on this long and winding road. But, uh, if it, if it is like, so if it is an open, and I think we could just answer this question on our own, right? We keep going and we, we, we go up this mountain pass and if we, if we rest, uh, uh, before we go up there, or we go up there, because now I'm noticing our progress. I'm saying, okay, it'll be about 2 p.m. when we get to where we start to go uphill. So if we go uphill for about uh, an hour and a half, which I think we could cover, well, anyway, it's not important. I just have lists in my mind. But then we can either turn around if we don't get to the top and we see what's in front of us, right? 
but we keep going if if we stay committed to it. And I think at different points during this journey, depending how long and winding it is, each one of us will lose investment in it, right? Uh, so I think we can, while we're still feeling good, and by the way, I feel great after that drink. So that's another bonus, uh, but also another reminder uh, that we could return to that. So we should set it a, a general idea of time, which I'm pretty good at tracking. More not not an offense, but better than you, list ice please. To return to the river and drink more fully. So we'll go up to the top of the mountain, right, or the top of the pass, and we'll see what we see, and then we can always come back down here and sleep in the woods. But if if we get to the mountain pass, right. Then we'll be a pretty much a full day's journey away. And uh, while we technically could walk all the way home, we, you know, that would be a pretty long walk. And we don't know what's in our packs, which I think is good. But whatever is in our packs, I mean, I'm beginning to think if we don't have it, that your boundary thing is correct, that, uh, I don't know, like, uh, Maybe this is a part of, like, us looking at our community's values. And, again, this isn't on a list yet, but in saying, well, I don't like our— if this is what our community values uh, to send us out uh, as children and expect us to return as adults, um, we just keep—I would say, if we come— if we keep going, then— We've made that true, whether it's true or not, and I would not, I would say, then then what's the difference between Baron Von Square Square and home, huh? That is uh, some heavy stuff, but I mean, it's a good thing we carry those, that all is, is, is as it is, and all will be well when it is as it is, because you're right, uh, dear sibling, and we're already starting to elevation gain early, which what I would say will put us a little bit ahead of track. So then we could uh, come back, no matter what we see up at the uh, thing, it would be a good idea to come back. We could drink water. Then we could look through our packs and uh, drink, you know, then and then sleep the night in the woods either way. I mean, unless there's something right on the other side of the pass, but I don't think there could be, unless it's like you're saying, some sort of loop or there's a giant party up there waiting for us. I would also agree that while I think this is another opportunity that you're saying, so I think you're having very strong feelings uh, about this now. And I think, but I think that's also a good thing. So I'm here to help Matt, like to see, to help you, to help care for you and respect what you're saying. But also to say, we don't need to make a decision right now either is the wonderful thing. But I do respect your opinion and actually share it as uh, if we did live in a community or we had a family. And, you know, no community or family is perfect. But if the value system of that uh, said, hey, get out there, here, here, here's how you become an adult, uh, symbolically and literally in our community, is to head out on a path, a uh, long and winding road with a pack. Uh, maybe the pack has all the supplies you need. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, but, uh, like, like, uh, use, you, you go out and then we're going to see what happens that, uh, we should have, we should have the openness to make a decision based on that, huh? Yeah, I think we should. It, it uh, it's, uh, like, uh. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, but I, yeah, I guess you're saying is kind of like I already reached a conclusion, and you're saying to me, be more open before I reach the conclusion. But you're open to my conclusion. You're just saying, hey, we don't have to make a decision at this point about it either. 
but you're all, I think it's also underlined by the belief that, uh, I mean, right now it's fine. And once, wow, we're really making good time. Like we'll be up to the top of this pass very soon. It like, but yeah, I don't know if I, I, again, I shared it wherever the belief is. It's like, uh, I guess it's true. Here's the thing that, that, uh, Maybe you didn't even mean this, but I just made this connection based on what you said. So if it's based on that, and it kind of feels H-A-R-S-H or whatever, not very loving to say, hey, head out on this path. Maybe you'll turn around in a few minutes and we'll be here waiting for you to come back. Uh, maybe that's what most kids do. And, oh, there's your lesson for adulthood. You're not an adult yet. Or, oh, this is part of adulthood. Or maybe some people go out further. Maybe there's stuff in our packs. Maybe there isn't. Uh, or maybe, you know, some kids go off the path. Or maybe they send somebody out running. Is to, uh, like, like, there's the harsh side of that. That is like, well, I don't share that. And I'm not comfortable with, like, that anymore. But there's also, like, the idea that, uh, they're accidentally making it true. What do you mean, dear sibling? Well, so we got to the top of the pass, right? Here we are looking out. And it's not that far down, but it is a little bit a steeper path down. It's still winding and it's still long because I think that was a more, well, that was one side well, you could kind of see that if we go down this way, there is another, we're in some sort of a hilly, not quite mountainous region. I would say that uh, there's a combination of plateaus here, and they can probably capture the rainfall, and in the winter, the snowfall, and then they feed these different streams that, uh, again, I read a book of less, that's why of our region's ecology. But I can see to the, so the long and winding road, if you watch it go off, it kind of goes in there. But also down there, uh, if you look off to the side, I'm pretty sure those, uh, because it is spring, you notice that, that, that there's a very fertile region down there. And I'm almost positive those are like wild berry brambles and that those may be like other, like fruit trees or something down there. You know, you can, can you see that? Yeah, I, I think those are like a stone fruit trees or something. So I think we should head back down to the river. It's going to take us almost no time since we're going right back downhill. And... I guess this is my thought about it. And again, we don't have, we don't have to, well, I think I, I've made one decision, but again, I'm making the decision and you can make it with me. But uh, I think we go back down to the river, maybe someplace we go off the trail where we could kind of rest by the trail and see if, uh, any of the adults do come along and make a decision because I don't think we're going to be sleeping very restfully or we could kind of take turns uh, watching out. But, um, like, I, I just think, like, we, we do that and uh, keep each other company. Again, again, it might be, like, we might have to moderate one another and care for one another, right? Because this couldn't, it might not be easy. Because you see here, here's this, I was thinking we could go off there because see how there's all those bushes? If we go off the path here, then we go to the river, it's behind the bush down there. Then we could come back and lie behind these bushes for the night. It's not that far off the long and winding trail, but we're not sleeping on the trail. Uh, so we kind of have a little bit of cover for comfort, but also say, well, if the adults come looking for us we'll hear them but i don't you know, you know what i mean i do know what you mean dear sibling but i think you have one more thing to say i'm going to drink some of the water now yeah drink it up I, i'm going to drink some too I, I i i've made a choice about my pack uh 
And I don't know if you, you were thinking this or, or not, but I have made a choice uh, that whatever happens, uh, so we could keep going tomorrow, we'll rest tonight. Uh, I feel pretty good about the fact that, that I feel good about the water I drank uh, and that we could get over that pass in the morning, go down and eat some berries and some stone fruit. There was a marshy, like it looks like there's other streams because this is a plateau or a series of plateaus. Uh, and we could see where we go. And again, we're not that far from our community and we could keep going, but we could keep going in stages. But I'm going to go without the pack. I'm not going to look in the pack. I think, I think I'm just going to throw my pack in the river here, the stream. Ah, uh, dear sibling, I, I guess uh, let, let's stand here together. Is it okay to, uh, if we put our arms around one another and hold our packs in front of us? Yeah, it is okay. And can I tell you how much I care about you and how much I love you? Well, I love you too, dear sibling. That's when I say dear sibling. It is a combination of love and appreciation. Yeah, and we've never been perfect. Our relationship hasn't been, but uh, I think we stand here and we'll hold our arms out and we'll decide what to do with these packs and uh, we'll go on from there knowing that all will be as it be and all will be well as it is. Uh, and then we'll say to one another good night and get some rest and we'll go on from there. Good night. I right, don't want to thank everybody that re re reviewed the show recently. This is from Sophia with an F, a DLC. Fell asleep. I was, I'm convinced this is good. Health Kenny talked about mutton, mutton, nothing for over an hour, multiple times a week. Uh, so much trouble falling asleep. I tried everything. Tried other podcasts, meditation, sounds. Nothing worked. Uh, but I've fallen asleep to this podcast two nights in a row before it's over. I can't explain how happy I am. The host says it takes a couple tries, but for the first time I listened, it worked for me. Uh, it's the first time I've been able to fall asleep without two hours. Can't thank it enough. Uh, so I also saw some reviews talking about how annoying the ads are, and I don't get it. You don't even think it's it, like uh, they blend seamlessly in with the podcast. Uh, maybe you'll even fall asleep. Uh, Anyway, I could give this a thousand stars. Thank you so much. Frozen Ice Cube 26 says, for all ages, uh, me and my younger brother uh, try to see who can get it. Uh, also, they had like Otter Things and Bernie the Butterfly crossover. Lilia, the anthropologist, says, racing thoughts be gone. Uh, I can't thank you enough for, for what you've done for me tonight. For some reason, my mind shuts off when you speak. You're gifted at what you do. I enjoy your childlike sense of humor. Look forward to every episode. You've been helping me for years now. When all else fails, I turn on your show. Thank you so much. Uh, Cass, Cass, Bud. Cass, but a host. Uh, torn on how to rate this. Uh, I don't know if I should admit this, but I found it fascinating. I definitely uh, need to find another sleep podcast. I don't know. I like it. Five stars. Uh, bad at Games from Canada says, Scooter, I do. This podcast is magic. I uh, never actually made it to the story. I love how you ramble. I don't have to pay attention. So good. Thank you. Bronze Lupin from Canada says, Love the show. Love it so much. Host is the best. Uh, Middle school student, great podcast, been listening for four years. Your podcast uh, helped me before big test. Thank you for spreading val good values. Sam P. Said, from the U.K. says, very grateful. Very, had trouble sleeping over the past six months, gotten worse. Discovered this podcast, and it's been a game changer. For review, saying his voice is too loud, turn the volume down. For those saying the intro is too long, fast forward it. Uh, definitely give it a few goes uh, as it takes a while to get used to. Thanks for everyone involved. Uh, no ho 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 Coda says uh, 24 minutes of ads, uh, loud noises, jarring music, uh, and fast ads for 24 minutes. None of this is actually honest, uh, so I don't really, like know if this is just someone's 
I guess this is someone who's tired and having a strong reaction, but it does kind of always throw me off when it's just, uh, I don't mind the bad reviews when it's like people just dislike the show, but when they put stuff that's just not true, it bothers me. Can't do it. Wake up, uh, and I need to, maybe they just listen all night, uh, I don't know, but they don't like it, uh. And then Bubblegum Dynasty says, uh, Z, four Zs, uh, longest I've ever been able to stay awake is 30 minutes. Uh, I love this podcast. And when the host says it's a space that doesn't pressure you to fall asleep, uh, just there to keep you company, something I, idea, something about that idea relaxes me. So thanks. Thanks everybody for who took the time to review the podcast. Uh, appreciate it. Assuming we exist for free show because we will support the sponsors and support the show on Patreon. A uh, free way to help the podcast is spread the word about podcasts in general, like I've been talking about. Or you could use our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Uh, that's a huge Oh, and I'll talk about that right up here. Uh, thanks and good night. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I've talked about my own journey with my own mental health, my own use of a licensed professional therapist, because I, I guess I want to normalize it for you and say, yeah, it's not easy. 2020 and 2021 have not been easy. But I want to empower you to take steps to take care of yourself, whether you're feeling depressed, you're struggling with your relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, meeting your your goals. Tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp, offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in to your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. In that way, you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And people close to me, people in my personal life have utilized the services of BetterHelp and they are really happy with it. And our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. Visit Better help.com slash sleep with me. That's better H E L P.com slash sleep with me and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional. Thanks everybody. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I don't know if I can do this Helix ad in the form of an ode. Oh, uh, Helix, thank you for having a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete. How I love how you match my body type and the listeners' body types and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you or ye, depending on if this ode was being set, a, set at a Renaissance fair. And why would ye buy a mattress? Mattress for someone else, right? Uh, this isn't very good for an ode. Oh, Helix. Uh, with Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be the perfect way for how you sleep. Ye, everybody's unique. Uh, <laughs> and Helix knows that. So they have several uh, several different models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. And oh, did I. Oh, Helix, it was not that long ago I took your quiz and you matched me with the Dusk Lux. And never has there been a better Dusk than when I'll return to your arms, my sweet, sweet Helix. For when I sleep hot, you keep me cool. 
when I toss and turn, I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach. You're there to adjust for me, to keep me comfortable. You're just the right firmness. I love seeing all the unboxing videos that listeners send out and what mattress they got matched with because I love seeing people find that the Helix that becomes the mattress of their dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress you're matched with, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever have to go to the mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't have to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. So just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. They'll match you with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you even get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, Scoots here. Before I tuck in, I just want to let you know about our referral program. That's where you can get great rewards for free, just referring people to podcasts. And you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. And uh, you just let people know about the podcast. Use this special link. Uh, you share it on social media or wherever, you know, you, you share online. And you could even earn ad-free episodes. And, uh, and the way to get into our, uh, what do you call that, our, our like little secret club that there's really no way to get into unless you hear an opportunity or you see an opportunity that I announce. And that's our wall of fame and our dream door society. And Cornelia is already well, well beyond that uh, in referrals. So it's very, very possible. And I haven't checked it in the last couple of weeks, but I'm sure a couple other people are up there getting close. But it all starts with that first referral. And you just let people know, hey, this is a podcast that uh, helps me fall asleep uh, that I enjoy listening to. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. Uh, thanks, everybody.